All right, so I've had quite a few comments underneath my videos. People are asking me, where did you get those beautiful snake racks that are right behind you? And let me tell you, those were probably the most expensive investment I ever made in ball pythons. I've invested quite a bit into snakes, but when you talk about the equipment for the snakes, that is well, what a lot of people don't take into consideration. As a matter of fact, looking at all the racks in my room here, I only have maybe, I'd say I only have about 180 square feet, maybe, maybe close to 200 square feet in the snake room and I crammed probably between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment in this room just to house and take care of my rats and my mice and my snakes it's pretty incredible and today I thought I'd kind of give you a demo of some of those racks and kind of the pricing as a matter of fact you know <laughs> you start thinking about ball pythons and the housing and the investment and you think twenty thousand dollars is a lot of money but I've been doing it for five years and let me tell I just didn't come up with twenty thousand dollars. I didn't have an inheritance where I just, you know, all all of a sudden invested in snakes all at once. It was a long process. And these these racks behind me, they're really beautiful. I'd say they're probably the most attractive, most visually appealing racks that I've seen anywhere on the market. They're pretty much the best of the best. I've seen some other racks that come close as far as as quality and the sturdiness. There's these are all ARS racks. I've also seen Freedom Breeder, really nice racks. Pretty much almost as expensive as these, but I would say the ARS is a little more visually appealing. Seems like the Freedom Breeder has like a raw stainless steel, almost like an industrial type of look. It would look good in a certain setting, maybe in a warehouse or something like that. But I'd say these racks behind me, they'd probably look good in your living room. <laughs> It'd be, you know, you'd be hard pressed not to find a place to put these where the racks would be really visually appealing. Here I just have them in my reptile room and in every video. So what I want to do is I kind of want to go through each rack and I want to show you how much they cost, how much per tub, how much per level, and how much for the entire rack. And kind of maybe you can add it up in your head and see how much I have invested in my snake room. I haven't really added it up. I just bought a little bit over the years, little by little. And the cool thing about ARS is that you don't have to buy an entire rack. I know some of these racks manufacturers you have to buy the whole entire rack and it's sometimes it's you can't really afford the whole rack and with ARS you can buy individual levels as a matter of fact when I first started out I think I had like three or four levels on the end of my snake room and that was it just a few tubs down on the floor and that's how I started and as I got more and more money I added to my rack systems different levels and the cool thing about ARS is with certain configurations you can actually mix and match the different types of levels so you don't have to have one whole stack of all the same kind of tubs you can kind of mix it up and have different size tubs through the whole rack which is pretty awesome so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and I want to show you my racks in more detail and share with you the pricing some of the prices that these racks run it's pretty amazing all right, so I'm gonna start with this rack. This is my ARS 5040 rack, and a 5040 is essentially a 50 series tubs, and in a full rack, there are 40 tubs. It's essentially 10 levels, and you can see I only have, I think it's seven levels here, so I don't have a full rack. I just bought it a partial rack at a time as I could afford it, and it actually stacks on these BOA tubs. I got the BOA tubs for my retics. These are the new ARS BOA tubs, and then they also have the old ARS BOA tubs, that fits on the 7030s over here. They actually don't make the, the old bow tubs anymore. They only make the new ones. And I should say, I, as I'm going through these racks, I actually don't get a commission for sales or anything. I don't get any kind of promotion or anything from ARS. I just thought it'd be kind of cool to kind of show you what I have in my snake room and kind of the prices and everything. A lot of people are asking. So I just kind of wanted to show you the, the size of an ARS 5040. A lot of people, get these thinking that they're going to breed their snakes for a really long time this this is the first year for this one this is this is actually a two-year-old female lesser clown deep in shed i'm breeding it with this beauty look at this beauty <laughs> that's probably my most expensive snake here this is my banana inchy clown male take a look at that beauty 
That is a really nice thing. They've, they've been paired up for quite a while. It's actually time to separate them and go through and feed everyone. But, the, but essentially that's what it is. You can get it with the cup holder or without the cup holder. And you have these little disposable cups that fit right in the cup holders. Pretty nice. I definitely would recommend the cup holders in all your tubs. It makes life so much easier. You don't have to go through and clean bowls. You can just kind of swap out the cups. And I actually made a little cheat sheet here as far as the pricing and the 5040. Uh, this is actually the original with uh, with full metal. The whole rack sells for two thousand six hundred dollars. So you're looking at two hundred and eighty dollars for each level of four which brings you to about $70 a tub, which isn't bad. So if you figure, you know, a $70, uh, a $70 enclosure, I doubt you could actually get something with a, with a tub and everything. And if you actually pull this out, uh, it's really kind of dirty in the back. <laughs> I haven't cleaned these. I need to go through and really clean them. But if you look way in the back, there is a metal heat strip. So it comes with the heat strips. It comes with the tubs comes with everything you need all you need is a thermostat to plug it in and for you know for 70 bucks for a snake enclosure that's pretty reasonable unless you multiply by you know a whole bunch of them by 40 and then you're talking some pretty serious money so that is uh, the, the other thing i should say about this is this is actually the the non-hybrid system and if you look at the non-hybrid essentially it's all complete steel on the tops here it's the it's kind of has a perforated top that is all steel and all the joints and everything are steel and if you look at this one this actually is a hybrid rack so the tops of this one are actually plastic and then it has plastic uh, couplings in here and the plastic saves on cost and it saves on the weight and the shipping and everything they just came out with the, the hybrid after I bought a lot of these so the hybrid let's see if you compare the original is 2600 the hybrid is 2100 for a full rack with the 5040 and the other thing is is a lot of times um, if I'm looking at the prices of one level, it's essentially the price of kind of a standalone level. There is one level on the bottoms of all these racks that's a little more expensive, like fifty to seventy dollars more expensive, and those come with the casters and the metal and everything else like that. So, uh, if you get the individual levels, those are the prices. But if you get the bottom level, it's usually a little bit more. So if we move over to the boa tub <laughs> and the boa tub is four hundred and fifty dollars per level which is pretty expensive it's really nice super nice it holds my really big reticulated pythons has a window on the front um i would think if you put ball pythons in here you'd probably need a hide because this is just too open for ball pythons with the glass I, i've tried to put ball pythons in with the windows and th let me tell you they do not like to be in a tub with a window unless they have a hide so you definitely want to think about that then this one I've put my 80 pound reticulated python in here it, it really slides really well with her in here super heavy duty $450 per level and then let's see the whole rack on that one is $2,500 for a stack of six of them so <laughs> it's like you know those two levels right there are almost a thousand and then you also have to take into consideration shipping on top of this and usually like these non-hybrid systems, they actually ship them completely assembled, all shrink wrapped on a truck. And it's like $300, $350 to ship. And that is what kills you. If you're doing individual single levels, you're paying for the shipping over and over and over. And that's kind of where I spent a lot of money on shipping. That's kind of like the hidden cost of trying to do it little at a time, kind of on the cheap. So if we take a look at this rack over here, this is one of the first ones I bought for my hatchlings. And this is an ARS 1039 hybrid. It actually, um, actually has 39 tubs, which is kind of an odd number. And I'm just gonna open one here and see what we have inside. I have to go through and actually clean and feed these guys. This is just kind of off the cuff here. This is my bamboo. And the thing I like about these tubs is they're really wide and the, the hatchlings can mature quite 
quite a bit before they actually outgrow this and have to move over into the 5040. But and another thing, when I buy these tubs, I always buy extra uh, extra tubs in the racks. So essentially, what I can do is I can go through here and make you know new substrate and new water and everything in in four tubs, and then I just go through and swap them out versus. You know, trying to pull it out and then put the snake in a temporary enclosure and then having the snake stress out while I'm cleaning the tub. It's kind of a quicker thing than I do. So if we look at the prices of an ARS 1039 hybrid, that is actually $1,600, not too bad. That actually comes to $130 a level or $43 per tub. And you think about uh, uh, an enclosure for a hatchling ball python, $43. I mean, b between the heat mat and the tub and everything else, you're almost spending that anyways on something really cheap. You know, you might be able to do it a little bit cheaper, but then eventually down the road, you're going to have to upgrade and buy a rack. So that is, that's kind of my thought. And the, and the funny thing is, is I didn't buy my hatchling racks until I actually had hatchlings. And then I kind of scrounged up the money because I know, knew just a few, you know, weeks later, a couple months later, when I sell the hatchlings, I can actually pay for the, the hatchling rack. As a matter of fact, my very first year I hatched out about a hundred ball pythons and I paid for every single rack in this room. It was pretty incredible. So I'm gonna move on over to this rack. All right, so on this rack, I actually have four rows of a 70-30. In the 70-30s, in my opinion, you can house almost the biggest ball pythons that you can imagine in a 70-30, it's really big. And this is a big pastel female. She's actually, um, I'm not sure if I'm breeding this one up or not. I'll have to check the schedule. Some of these are breeding, some of them have the year off. But essentially it's the same thing, except it has a lot more room. And uh, originally what I did is I bought some of these for my ball pythons. And then I bought uh, these on the bottom, which are an ARS 8018s. And the 8018s actually have windows in them. And what I did is I put duct tape over the windows and spun them around. So, so you can't really see the windows of the ball python kind of get stressed out if you have windows on there but if you take a look at this one I'm actually pairing this one up this is a really big female with a really tiny male <laughs> look at how small that male is this is a male scaleless head 50% uh, het caramel albino crossed with my female 100% het caramel albino hoping for some scaleless head visual caramel albinos from this pairing and it was funny because look at the size difference between these guys it almost seems unreal but I came in here the other day and they were actually locked up together and I'd say this is is this is almost too big for a ball python and the only ball pythons you can really put in a tub this big is something like this 5,000 gram female like the biggest of the biggest I'd say that that female might be a little bit cramped in a 70 30 maybe pretty close I'd say it, 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 you know just kind of looking at that and then looking at the tub I'd say it's it probably would outgrow the 70 30 most people don't go up to an 80 18 because they usually don't have ball pythons that big <laughs> See, some of these are like an exception to the rule. They usually really don't grow to that size. And here is an older style boa tub that I have my corn snake in. Needs to be a little bit spot cleaned here. <laughs> this guy's been doing great. I actually had this guy for sale at the show and decided since I didn't sell him, I think I'm gonna keep him for a little bit longer. He is really cool. It's kind of cool to bring to the shows and just kind of you know show him off what the potential size of a corn snake. He is a really cool one. And if you look at some prices, I could look at my cheat sheet on this one. And it's pretty cool how the 8018s, the old bow tubs, and the 7030s all stack on top of each other. So the 7030s, these are the old style. 7030 originals, they were selling for 2,500 for a full stack. It's a 70 series tub, 30 per rack. So it would be 10 levels, I only have four levels on there. And then uh, actually if you do the 7030 hybrid, it is $2,000 for the whole rack. So you're saving about 500 bucks on that one. And then the 8018s down on the bottom where I have my really big female ball pythons, those are, um, uh, it's actually uh, ARS uh, 8018, so it would be 18 
uh, tubs per an entire rack. So that should be nine levels on that. And that sells for $2,850. Pretty crazy. And then the boat tub, of course, is the $450. So that is pretty much all my snake racks on this side of the room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I want to show you some of my rodent racks. That is a really huge investment as well. All right, so this rack is actually one level shy of a full rack. The problem is in here, I have really short ceilings. And if I had one more level on here, I really couldn't fit my bucket. And the bucket up here on top fills with water and then it drains to all the levels through these hoses and puts water on through these nozzles and, and feeds water to all the rats. And this one is kind of interesting because I don't believe they make a hybrid version of this rack. If you get the whole entire rack, let me tell you, it is pretty expensive. Let me look at my cheat sheet. This is actually $2,500 for an entire rack. So it's just, you know, a few hundred dollars less. You know, of course, if you add the shipping on top of that, I'd say I'd probably paid $2,500 for this rack. And this rack is, is really nice. I, I actually really like this. Uh, but back when I had rats in aquariums, I was essentially working on cleaning rats pretty much non-stop for the whole time. And getting this actually <laughs> liberated my life. I didn't have to go through and clean so much and take care. It seemed like all I was doing anymore was cleaning my rats. And then after I got this, the, the work went to, I'd say it's like one-tenth or maybe one-twentieth of the work. All the water water's up here. And then in the back, we have little hoppers that you put like, uh, I'd say you could probably put close to 150, 200 pounds of food per rack on these and it's, it's been a lifesaver and then I actually originally I started with the, these these other rat racks down here these are called let me see my my cheat sheet here this is what they call the rat breeder and I think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put your pregnant females in here until they have babies and then you move them over here and essentially what I do is uh, this these are kind of my grow outs where uh, I pretty much you know let my little ones grow up a little bit more over here but I usually keep them paired up full time in both of these racks and then if I need you know smaller like pinky rats I actually feed them off from these guys down here so that it doesn't really overcrowd the tubs it's the, I'd say that's the pretty much the hardest part is trying to organize so you don't crowd the tubs and then you stay up on top of the cleaning and everything it's it's a whole challenge the the rat organization thing I'd say that's probably the biggest thing and then these down here Let's see, the rat breeders, $2,400 for 32 tubs. That comes to $300 a level or $75 a tub. As a matter of fact, these rat growths over here, these come to close to $110 per tub. I think that's like my most expensive tub out of all of them, which is kind of interesting that the rats would be more expensive. Then I have two rows of mice here up on top. And the mice are kind of the same. Look at that big old fat female mouse <laughs> ready to give birth. And it's cleaning day actually this weekend, so I'm gonna go through and clean these. You can see this is kind of an on-the-fly video. And if you look at my mouse uh, mouse levels up here, this is an ARS 1050. So these are actually there's actually 50 tubs in a whole level, five uh, per row. So that would be a 10. That is actually $2,600 for a whole complete rack of mice, which is kind of crazy. There's some pretty crazy prices. And I think a lot of it is the sheet metal expansion and the bending and everything. I think that is a little bit more complicated. Trying to put the sheet metal hoppers on the back and then all the nozzles and the tubes. I think it's just a lot more work to actually get there and make these. So the other thing that's interesting that actually I, I kind of made up myself is this adapter. I welded this together. Basically this piece and this piece over here to put the mouse rack on the rat rack over here. And I, <laughs> they didn't actually have the the adapter where you could put the, the mice on the rats like that. And the funny thing is, is, you know, I started looking at these racks and thinking, you know, these are so expensive. Uh, why can't I just make my own, you know, buy the metal and weld it together and then paint them and everything. And let me tell you, 
once you start buying the metal and then the paint and then you figure out the labor and everything, I, I, I was guaranteed that I probably couldn't make a rack for much more than I'm buying them from ARS. So I'm thinking they must be getting their metal in bulk or something to actually do this. And then if you actually go over and look at the ARS's website, they actually have a huge warehouse with all this equipment and all these employees. And you know they're making some probably making some pretty thin margins on some of that stuff. You know, it's if, if they're they have all that overhead in addition to making racks. I just thought it was interesting. I, I kind of dabbled in a little bit. I was thinking, yeah, maybe I'll make my own racks, and then I started adding up the cost. And I was like, no, I'll just buy the racks from ARS. All right, so then the last rack over here, this is uh, my other part of my hatchlings. This is an ARS 1065 hybrid. Look at all those tubs. That is just amazing, all those tubs. And actually, most of them are still filled with hatchlings that uh, that I've, some of them I've sold at the shows, and some of them I'm going to sell at the next upcoming shows. And then uh, I'll probably start shipping after the next show. But <laughs> look at all those tubs. Actually, a whole rack like that, that is an ARS 1065. It's it's almost $2,200 for that entire rack. So that is $180 a level, $36 per tub, which isn't too bad, I guess. This is kind of the setup here. It's, they still have the little drink holders in here. And if you can kind of take a look at this one, this one's a 50% hit pied uh female here you can see it's uh i just kind of randomly picked one here and i'd say keeping on top of all these is another challenge trying to go through and feed them and clean them and everything else but it's only a short amount of time before you actually go through and sell them and I'd say it's, you know, it seems like a lot of money, but if you just start slow and then as you hatch out and sell your ball pythons, if you actually reinvest all of that into your equipment, it actually eventually will pay for itself. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Raven Wolf asks, can you feed baby ball pythons baby rats instead of hopper mice? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, my very first year in ball pythons, I had my first 39 hatchlings. I put them in a ARS 1039 over here, and I started feeding the little live baby rats. And let me tell you, I think out of the 39, I probably only had five or six that actually ate the first time around. And I kept cycling them through, and they wouldn't eat and wouldn't eat. And finally, I went to the pet store, it pretty much out of desperation, and I said, hey, I can't get my baby ball pythons to eat. And they're like, you definitely need live hopper mice. And I started buying hopper mice from the pet store at $3 a pop. The only time I was broke the bank buying them that expensive. And sure enough, as soon as I put them in my rack, every single ball python hatchling actually ate all those mice. It was pretty amazing. And on the, kind of on the flip side, I've heard some people say that they've used baby rats to start out their ball pythons, and they've never had a problem, which is kind of interesting. It's pretty much completely opposite of what I've found. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.